Cyberware is completely reworked in update 2.0 and it's now an incredibly rewarding and risky system. Today we're going to go through every category of cyberware, talk about all the changes and some of the best cyberware options that you need to become the next David Martinez. Let's go! We're going to be dropping some Cyberpunk Update 2.0 builds very soon, so let me know what sort of build you would like first in the comments down below. So we'll start with how the new system works. So essentially, the main difference here is it is now a risk versus reward sort of system. So the main category is on the left, which is the cyberware capacity. And this is the amount of cyberware that your body can actually handle at any given time. There are ways you can increase this limit just by simply leveling up and acquiring certain perks like the Renaissance Punk or the Edge Runner, or by cyberware capacity capacity shards that you may find throughout the world. And these are just random, like you'll find shards on different corpses. Occasionally you'll get a cyberware capacity shard that will increase your overall capacity. The next is on the right hand side, which is your armor. And this is your resistance to damage as you would expect, but it is no longer tied to clothes. It is tied to cyberware that can be increased via the skeleton in integumentary system. I'm definitely saying that wrong. And you can also increase it via perks like the license of Chrome perk. There are certain closings that will still give you a little bit of armor, like if it's actually, you know, like armor clothing, it'll give you some armor rating. But for the most part, it comes from these two cyberware systems, plus some others that can give you a little bit of extra armor if you need it. Now, there are perks in the technical ability tree that will benefit you from cyberware. So if you want to become a David Martinez style and really invest into the cyberware system, then you really need that technical ability attribute for that reason. And the actual cyberware themselves, like the items, have been completely reworked as well. So now cyberware will have an attuned stats. So any piece of cyberware you look at, it'll say like body attuned, reflex attuned, tech attuned, etc. And you will get a bonus for the amount of attribute points you have in that attribute when you're using that piece of cyberware. So you can really customize and min max your build by say, if you've got a really high technical ability and then focusing on technical ability attuned cyberware in that way. And you can also now increase the tiers of your own cyberware. So rather than say buying a new piece of cyberware, you could just increase the tiers of it if you like it by up upgrading it and then you can also change the secondary stat modifiers that are on them as well if you so choose to when you are upgrading. So those components that you find throughout the world now are super important for the cyberware system so you can upgrade to say tier 5 and tier 5 plus plus to really get the most benefits out of this system and the last thing is that the higher your street cred the less you have to pay when buying cyberware as well so make sure you're maxing out your street cred for that and then the higher tiers of cyberware gear is actually now linked to your level so the higher your level the higher quality cyberware where will become available. Same with all the other shops as well. All right, let's go through all the categories now. We're gonna start with the frontal cortex. Now this improves the use of quick hacks and decreases cooldowns. This is mostly beneficial for say intelligence builds that use a lot of RAM and quick hacks. There's a lot of these cyberware modifications are all sort of based around that. There is some flexibility for other builds, but if you're looking for those other builds, consider the attribute attunements here and see that they're actually benefiting you. If you're not using intelligence and actually using say a cyber deck, then you probably won't invest too much into frontal cortex as it's mostly passive bonuses for say ram and quick hacks and that sort of a thing arms is one you absolutely will invest a lot into regardless of your build as this is like combat cyberware focused so this is your gorilla arms your mantis blades your mono wire and your projectile launch system now you will essentially pick which one of these four that you like depending on what sort of a build that you are running and what you want to use but it's also more flexible now with 2.0 so because of the way that the attunement works you can find say gorilla arms that are attuned to intelligence, if you like, or something like Mantis Blades or Mono Wires are attuned to, say, using reflexes, different sort of range builds. You're not sort of locked into using like the projectile launch system for a range build like you may have been before update 2.0. You can do some sort of interesting combinations there. So see what they're actually attuned to and see if you want to grab a arm that is, say, toxic or have, say, thermal effects on it as well, which you can do and upgrade them, obviously, through the upgrade system because they're one of the primary cyberware systems that you'll be using depending on whichever one you want to use. And we'll cover like these in much more depth when we go into like some build videos for like the Grill Arms, Mantis Blades, Mono Wire, Projectile Lawn System, all that stuff. But overall here, it's really dependent on your build and how you want to play, but just pay attention to those attunement stats. Skeleton is one that everyone will invest into because it increases your armor and overall defense. So this is the one that 
everyone will invest in, especially maybe first, like anytime you make those early game cyberware purchases, it's probably going to be in the skeleton tree because that is your armor, especially to increase the tier with those crafting components in the early stages of the game is highly beneficial to increase your overall armor and survivability. Now, a lot of the cyberware here is, and its modifiers are mostly focused on like melee builds or say carry capacity. If you're like looking to spec into like a melee build, whether that be with like blades or a blunt weapon or gorilla arms, menace blades, etc., you probably will want to invest a lot into the skeleton line because of that armor and overall defense. The options here, like there isn't really necessarily like a best option. It's just dependent on whatever gives you the most armor or say if you're focusing on a melee build, then go those routes. But as long as you're getting armor value out of your skeleton cyberware, you're going to see success. Nervous system, however, is really cool. And this is your time slowing effects and like detection for enemies. Now this is mostly say like cool and refreshed attuned items, but the Karenzakov that slows time can now be activated while driving with the Road Warrior perk. And it's also a great sideware option as when you say dash or slide or dodge and via aiming, you can slow down time to make sure you land your shots. But there are other options like the Synaptic Accelerator, which will slow down time when enemies detect you or something like the Reflex Tuner, which will slow down time when your health drops low. The one thing I'd pay attention to here is just whatever the item you're equipping is actually attuned to for those extra bonuses. But essentially it's just what you want to slow down time for right so if it's enemy detection you're probably focusing on like a stealth build if it's while you're like sliding or dashing it's probably a reflex focus range build just depends on what the goal is for your overall setup next is the integumentary system now this improves your armor and damage resistance very similar to the skeleton for the most part here everything in this line is invested in just increasing that overall armor and capacity that you do have now there is one option here like the optical camo which which will have perks that are linked to it for say stealth builds that make you a little bit invisible if you wanted to go that route. Plus in the new relic skill tree for the expansion, there are skills linked to optical camo as well if you wanted to go that route. But here you're essentially just looking at ways to increase your armor, whether that be from just the straight up subdermal armor or grabbing something like the defense Kakov that'll increase your mitigation chance as well. So that's like other ways of improving your resistance or pain editor to reduce all incoming damage. Operating system is a big decision just like arms. So there are really three options here, but essentially what this will do is define your build to some degree. So the first option being cyber deck, which is the one that you typically start with. Now this gives you the option to scan and quick hack, and it's heavily linked to the intelligence tree and the intelligence perks. And this is the, you know, overloading and overheat and all those different sort of effects that you can apply to enemies just by bringing up your scanner. Now, if you're not investing in the intelligence tree, you probably won't use a cyber deck, but cyber decks can be extremely powerful, especially now that you can stack hacks with the new perk tree. Absolutely worth investing into if that is the route you're going. But if you're not actually investing in intelligence or you don't want to do any scanning and hacking, you've got two options being the Sand Devastan and the Berserk. The Sand Devastan is the one that you're probably most familiar with if you have watched the anime. And essentially this allows you to slow down time and get various buffs for a period of time while this is active. Now, just like the Kerenskakov with the Road Warrior perk, you can activate this while driving and just get like a slow-mo effect to like get around corners and do that sort of cool stuff and just do cool drifty things. Now, there's also the Berserk, which will give you major resistances and a HP buff for a limited period of time. And it's also activated via pressing E. Now, this is really like a core decision for your build and your overall play style. So it's whatever of these benefits you the most. If you're going a melee route, Berserk is definitely the option that I would go for because of the extra health and resistances buff that you get from it just makes a lot more sense. But the Sand Everstand also works there because slowing time, right? Enemies can't hit you if you're like zooming around the battlefield but then any sort of say stealth build or even some sort of range build to some degree you could get away with using the cyber deck for those scanning and different effects you can get from it but it's really dependent on your build all three options are fantastic now with the new cyberware changes the face cyberware improves your vision and allows you to highlight environmental clues now that highlighting is like specific things in the environment depending on the optics you have equipped this could be highlighting enemies it could be highlighting traps the main decision you'll make here is what you want to highlight in combat for me it's highlighting enemies I just find that to be the most simple option so I can actually see where enemies are but if you're going like a stealth option something that can highlight cameras and turrets could be beneficial then so you actually know where those cameras are so you can switch them off and not get seen but in this category any option is really good it's just whatever you specifically want to highlight that you want to know about when you're actually in combat or stealthing around I would pay attention to the attunement here to make sure it's attuned to a stat or attribute that you are actually invested into hands is next and you may notice there is an additional hand slot now which is 
unlocked via the ambidextrous perk and the technical ability line. There are a few options here, but you're really gonna pick between two, and that's the ballistics, compressor, and smart link, or you could have both if you have the ambidextrous perk. But these, what these do is the ballistics compressor will allow you to see the trajectory of the ricochets from power weapons. So in real time, when you're like aiming down sights with a power weapon, how they can ricochet off the ground as they hit targets, you can actually see if they're going to hit the targets or not. Hugely beneficial buff, plus it increases that ricochet damage as well. And you can do this around corners or just literally shoot at the ground so you don't have to aim at enemies. It's really fun to do. Also, Smart Link is essentially like the same thing, but for smart weapons. So it'll actually allow you to use that like smart targeting system that'll auto lock onto enemies. So you can then shoot them with that and it gives you buffs to say crit damage and all those different effects from using them as well. But depending on which option you're going here, just make sure it's attuned to the right stat, whether that be technical ability or intelligence for smart weapons or reflexes, what have you. But they're the two main options you'll go with, but there are other options if say you wanted to focus on a different sort of a build, like increasing crit chance with handle wrap or something like that. Circulatory system affects your stamina and health regen and just overall survivability. There's plenty of really good options in here, but three that I'll call out is Biomonitor. So it will give you an auto heal when your HP gets low. So you won't have to worry about like popping a health item when, when that triggers. You've also got heal on kill. So when you kill an enemy, you heal. That's pretty self-explanatory. And blood pump functions as a healing item. And it's a really powerful option that doesn't ever run out because it's, you know, in your body, but you'll just be on a cooldown. So all these plus the other options in this line are all fantastic. And for the most part, you'll invest more in the system if you're in a melee build, because it is about that sort of survivability in combat. But you're grabbing something like heal on kill or biomonitor just for that extra survivability for any build is absolutely beneficial to grab as long as you're not going over your cyberware limit. The last category is legs, and this is my favorite category. So this improves your mobility and it can slightly increase your armor as well. This is a personal preference choice here because all the options will give you some sort of a movement ability. For example, Link's Paw will improve your stealth or you could go something like Reinforced Tendons, which will give you a essentially like a double jump because you can jump in the middle of the air or like the charge jump, like the extra jump from Fortified Ankles, or you can get like an extra increased sprint speed with Jenkins Tendons. But essentially for me, it has to be Reinforced Tendons. I just love the feeling of double jumping in like any game and it just feels really smooth here. Without double jumping in Cyberpunk, I feel like something is missing. So the first thing I always do in like any build, even before update 2.0, was go and grab reinforced tendons for the double jump. So consider what option you want to grab here. And obviously the attunement is important and you can improve this here to change the different status effects. Cause there isn't like heaps of options and improving it by increasing its tier will give you a little bit of extra armor. Plus you can get better stat modifiers on them, which for the most part here, because there's only really the four different options, the stat modifiers that you get like those secondary stats might not benefit your builds. So actually upgrading them and then changing those modifiers is something that benefits you is something that you should do. But that is all the cyberware categories. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.